Okay guys, my GoPro died, but anyway, as I was saying. Cold bracket bolts, they go right here, one, here two, and then there's a nut that holds the heater core hoses and bolts onto that bolt right there with this, that nut right there. Then we got a fourth right there. Or actually, wait, sorry, my I can't count apparently. One, two, three, and four there. And then the fifth one is right on back there. If you can see it. So those are the coil bracket bolts. And then you can just kind of lift these out of the way. And I'm not going to disconnect the spark plugs or anything. I'm just going to go straight to the valve cover bolts. Which are right there. Which these are eights if I remember right. Yeah, they're eights. And then take those off. And then check all of the... Uh, all of the valves. And all of the rocker arm bolts. Make sure that they're all good and tight. And then I will move to the driver's side. Which is basically the same thing and do it over there. So I have the passenger side valve cover off, as you can see, and um, a tip. This is coming from experience, from my experience, for you guys. Um, if you ever are messing around with your intake manifold, or not intake manifold, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's an intake manifold valve cover. See this? valve cover gasket well my truck is is cold I let it sit overnight so it, it's completely cold the engine's cold and as you can see I, I decided to disconnect the wires of the coils because I wanted to get more room to take the valve cover off but make sure if you can like for instance there was this one instance that I was driving to Table Rock you guys have seen this video or if you haven't go on and check that up there I'll put a link to it. Uh, one of my rocker arm bolts, which are, yeah, those right there, they failed. And when I say they failed, I mean like it completely loosened up because they're torque to yield. One time use, really. You should get new ones if you're going to take them off. Um, I didn't. I know, stupid me. I still haven't gotten a new set, which I should, but it completely backed out and killed a cylinder like it, it it shut off the cylinder it didn't get any compression any any uh combustion or any exhaust and i had to take off the valve cover while the engine was hot like operating temperature hot and the gasket was stretched because when it gets heat it expands to one seal better on the surface and two well because of the material it is so it wouldn't go back on and we kind of just had to let my truck sit and let the gasket cool down we threw it in one of our coolers that we had that had ice in it and then we eventually just got it on and got it to work but yes uh if you're going to do this type of stuff at any time make sure the engine is cool or you'll be spending another 40 to 50 minutes waiting for the gasket to cool down enough to where it will form fit again on the valve cover but anyway getting to the meat and potatoes of why we actually took this off as you can see there is no bad rocker arm on this side and I along with those I can't really get to those but I did check them so that kind of narrows it down to EGR and also the truck has a bunch of the same symptoms that uh, corresponds with EGR. So I'm going to check the driver's side just because I want to be thorough. And I don't want to miss something and then grenade a cylinder. But yeah, it's looking like it's going to be the EGR. And I am going to get that block off kit. Off-road use only. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to move to the driver's side now. Just check driver's side. We're all good there. So, I mean, the only thing else that could be ticking is this valve. Or I, I guess I could have an exhaust leak, but 
I mean, I've looked at all the gaskets. I've checked all the bolts. They're all good. So, I'm just going to get that uh, EG for off-road use only, obviously. And uh, see if it fixes it. And if it does, happy day. If it doesn't, then I'm going to be pissed. But yeah, good stuff. Okay, um, I did a thing. I took off the whole EGR system here. As you can tell, intake side, then exhaust manifold side. Um, I checked to see if there was any holes in here, and there isn't. It is dirty as hell, but like, look at this. This is on the intake side. That is not clean at all. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my rag, I'm gonna take some WD-40 that's actually over there. Eh, that. I'm gonna clean up all this. Check this. And see what the hell happens. And I also have a gasket here that goes on this side, the manifold side right there. Focus. Yep, there we go. Right there. Don't focus on my finger. But you know what I'm saying. That bad boy. So, yep. Gonna do that. Get everything cleaned. We'll be good to go. Okay. Back out here. Got that gasket I needed. Or at least I think I need. Still might be that I need to get that EGR block off. But I'm gonna try save myself a little bit of money because this gasket was only two dollars. So if I can save myself 20 some bucks by just replacing a gasket, I will. But if it turns out that it's the actual valve, well, kind of SOL and got to replace the, well, I, I got to get the block off. So, yeah, but got, got the gasket here. <sighs> to replace, yeah, that gasket right there. So, Gonna get those two bolts off right there. Obviously 10 mils, got it right there. Don't wanna lose that 10 mil, you know what I mean? May never see it again. And uh, I'll get back to you. All right, got, got both the bolts out. And as you can see, the trashed gas gasket is right there. Got the new one here. So gonna throw the gasket back on because yesterday I had already cleaned that gas the gasket area is up I might go through it again just to make sure that it's all good but I'm pretty sure it is so we'll, we'll probably just give it a once over real quick and then throw on the new gasket but I don't know why I just thought about this but so the EGR is a valve this thing's a valve so that would mean since it's a valve, it's not always on or always off. So there should be at least a small temperature difference between this pipe right here and this pipe right here. The collector from the manifold and then the collector into the uh, intake. So if I can get my camera down there. As you can see, there's just a small area right here where the pipes are free where there isn't any you know tip wrapping or anything like that so what i did is i, I touched either end the intake well intake the exhaust side and the intake side and there is no temperature difference so what that tells me is either the valve stuck open or I drive like a fucking maniac which both might be a problem but pretty sure the valve is stuck open which would mean that the EGR is bad but I'm gonna replace the gasket anyway 
and see if the ticking goes away. If it doesn't, then I know that it is the EGR. It's either the EGR or I have an exhaust manifold that is cracked, which would really suck. But then I would get long tube headers, which would be really cool. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm going to keep going on it, throw this gasket on, tighten up the two bolts, and I will see you on my test drive. Now I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put this information tidbit right before the test drive. Um, the reason I believe it is EGR, I have already done some research on this, is a couple reasons. So for one, the idle is really low. It, it's at about... 500 and two as you can see my trip is at 188 miles and uh, I'm already at quarter tank in this truck I usually get around 280 to a tank and I'm not gonna get to 280 I haven't gotten to 280 for a tank in a very long time it's usually around 210 so that, that's a big difference in miles per gallon, or right now it's miles per gallon, even though I'm not smiling because of the ticking. But um, also, it lugs down when you accelerate. So basically, it's like, it's like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you trying to accelerate right now when I'm like on the gas hard? And then it stalls, but it doesn't stall like die, but the acceleration stalls out at around two and a half K that may be converter, but I don't think it is at this point because of these other symptoms. And obviously the ticking noise is under load. So I have one, two, three, four of the five symptoms of an EGR valve. Actually, no, five of the five. Because, I mean, my engine light isn't on right now, but it did turn on when I was driving back to Olathe one time, and it is hot as hell in this truck. And when I checked codes at my house, it popped up with P0405, which is an EGR low voltage uh, DTC. So, it's another thing. And on my research that I found, it said that even when the EGR valve is in the process of failing, it won't trip the EGR code, but the engine will trip a light, but it will be confused, confused as to which one it is or what it is. And I've been getting like multiple misfire, uh, O2 sensors, low voltage, a whole bunch of different trouble codes until all four O2 sensor codes popped along with the EGR, which I'm guessing is when the EGR finally decided to say, see you later and exited the chat. So that's, that's kind of my information that I have. And I thought I'd just let you guys know, kind of, if you're looking at it on your truck and your truck has, well, Anything less or more than that, really, 306.5, almost 6.6, there's a good possibility that it could be that if you have all these symptoms. So, uh, if you are watching this right now, there you go. You got your information for you. I mean, uh, anybody can get that. It's just a simple Google search, but that's kind of what I found. And I, I do have the, the luxury of Shopkeep Pro through my auto tech center here at Pitt. So that's another plus. That's another uh, uh, really handy tool that I can use. So, all right, now to the test drive. Okay, about to go on ahead and see if we still have that ticking. Um, you're gonna be along the ride with me. Yep, I still hear it. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's get on Broadway. Yep. 
still hear it. Still very low idle. Like when I say low idle, it's it's at 500 RPM. Should be around 700. At least 700. can hear it over the exhaust and really loud tires but it's still ticking like a bitch so that's gonna be EGR valve for sure and if it's not the EGR valve then I'm I don't know I guess I'm just getting freaking long tube headers cat back exhaust no I won't do that I'll try to track it down definitely hear that so I'll have to figure it out it's not the gasket probably EGR it's just stuck open and sticking like a bitch and low idle because of it so we'll figure it out we'll, 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 we'll get her squared away 305,000 isn't that much oh sorry about that 306,000 Man, she got another 150,000 there, at least, at least. Five threes never blow up. And if they do blow up, just throw fucking 6.0 in there, supercharge it, hell yeah. I'll, I'll probably just do another five three and supercharge it, actually. That'd be badass. All right, I'm gonna head back to El Residence and uh, do some research. And I will get back to you guys. But this might be the end of this video because I know I haven't uploaded in like, ah, I'd say about a month and a half. So I need a, it's very windy, hang on. And now it's hot, damn it. Uh, I haven't uploaded in about a month, maybe even a month and a half. So I, I know I need to get some uploads out for you guys. So if this is the end of this video, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, maybe even learned something, and uh, if you did enjoy it, and if you did learn something, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell so that you get notified every time that I upload, which may be scarce, but I don't ever just disappear, it's for good reason, I'm either working on school, or well, if I'm working on something else, I usually show you guys, but yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.